Hi, you guys. I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I told you I was coming back. Hey, you knew I was coming back. Hey, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Today, I want to talk about these women, and a lot of them are on the program, and they are marrying and dating men that are incarcerated. I want to talk about that because today I was watching YouTube, well, the, earlier this morning, and this show came across. It was talking, I think the name of it is Love uh, After Lockup. And um, I was curious to know why do women that are on the outside, out here in the world, you know, out here, you know, where men are. You know, it's 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 puzzling to me that they was decide to date someone that's incarcerated. You know, and these guys being incarcerated, they be done been incarcerated for years. You feel what I'm saying? And most of the time, when these women be mean these men in jail, it'll probably be through a friend or it'll probably be through a phone call. You know how they be doing the three-way or you know you might be talking to somebody, your girlfriend or your your friend dude might be talking to a dude in jail. You know how they be making calls home so they can get some money on their books or either so they can get in touch with somebody else. You know, things of that sort. So, um, and then... Women be connecting with guys in jail like that. And some guys, they, they be in jail and they might have a friend girl on the outside and they'll introduce their friend girl on the outside to one of their folks that's in jail that's probably going to be getting out soon. You feel what I'm saying? So, and it's like some of these dudes, they don't be genuine to the women. You know, some of them just want to, you know, manipulate the women's mind and, um, you know, receive all kind of royalties in jail. Royalties meaning some of them women be sending them phones some kind of way because a lot of them do have phones or they put monies on the books so the man can call four, five times a day. Who does that? You know what I'm saying? That's that's like running up the bill. Like that gives me the impression that the guy don't really care. You know what are we talking about? Three, four times a day, almost every day. Call me one day out of a week, four times a month is good for me. But I don't just be going to jail. But anyway, and they be manipulating these women. You know, and um, I'm not gonna do no. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years with you. I'm not gonna do four, three, two, one. And it depends on what you went to jail for. Hmm. Now let's just put that on the table. But I just want to let you women know, because I know a lot of them on the program, just being honest, that I have talked to or heard about or listened to a conversation or it's been on TV, you know, they put everything on YouTube. So I've known for women to talk to them dudes in jail and then they end up marrying these dudes. Now, how you talking to a dude in jail that's been there five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years? Some of them go to jail when they're teenagers, so they don't know nothing about the outside life. And that's where the manipulating come in. They meet somebody, and then they feel like they already know you got low self-esteem because you're meeting somebody in jail that has committed a crime. So, they're going to manipulate your mind. They love you eventually in a couple of weeks. They're going to be talking about they love you, this, that, and the other. And then that's going to take you to another level because the nigga going to be saying shit that these niggas out here in the streets ain't saying. And that's a manipulation of the mind. And some of them are narcissists. So I'm saying that to say this. Uh, don't be doing it. Don't be doing it. 
I, I was watching the program, yeah, look, at the lockup. And then what I want to show y'all, this how these guys be doing, these women. And they, sometimes they be knowing it. But look at this clip right quick, and I'll be back. After coming out of the joint and seeing how it's going, I ain't feeling it. Okay. I like to be outside. I like to do fun. You ain't trying to do Okay, that's what I'm sure. Hey, come here. No, I don't care. What you... What you snowing away for? Mm -hmm. Look. I don't. I don't care. So you don't think I use you? Ain't go a thousand dollars? For all the clothes? I'm good. Ain't you good. Good. I'm good. Hurt. Man, tell me for paper. I don't, I, I'm good. I don't want it. <laughs> I let him leave for a look. So yeah, old dude were really just using her and he prickly told her. You feel what I'm saying? And the little thousand dollars that he throwed to her, she probably done gave up more money than that. You feel what I'm saying? And that what I'm saying. He he see prickly just told y'all. Don't be dating nobody in jail. When they call you, baby, that be jail lies, jail love, jail that the life that ain't really going to never happen. And then if they marry you, let me tell you something. And then a lot of y'all women be running y'all dick sucker too much. You know what I'm saying? Be mean to guy. You don't even know these guys. You be telling them your whole life story. You be telling them, you know, how much money that you make on your job. You know, you tell them how much money you have in your bank account, how many credit cards you got, how much money you got on the credit card, how you can run the credit card up to this amount of money. You know, you got a new car. You know, you ain't got no notes no more. You just pay, you know, you don't, you, you just pay car insurance. You know, you tell me for all this, you how paid for, you know, you just pay taxes once a year. You know, your mama and your daddy was in a car accident and they left you all of these royalties. You know what I'm saying? And then the nigga, oh, let's get married after a month or two of talking to you while he in jail. So six months later, y'all get married. You done told your family they think you stupid and dumb or slow. Because what are you doing? You don't even know this man. And then they be in jail so long. And then when they go to jail when they're teenagers and stuff, you know, they don't know nothing about being in jail unless they don't went several times just back to back as a teenager. And what teenager does that a lot of them do. So they in jail, right? And everything happening to them. Just put it that way. So some of them have girlfriends in jail and some of them are the girlfriends in jail. But you done told Ralph all of your business. So Ralph, he ain't getting out of jail for another 20 years. So he turned you on to the dude that's been here 10 years, and he ain't got them but six more months. And the reason why he turned you on to the dude, because you done told him all your business. So dude going to get money, and some of the money he going to send back to dude that's in jail so he can make commissary every motherfucking week. Now, let's just keep it real and put it out on the table. This how they hustling. And then they know that you got this amount of money. You got this type of job. You, when you get out, you're going to put them up on whatever hustle, whatever game you got. Or they going to be laid back. And you're going to be taking care of them. You already got two plus kids. And he'll come this nigga out of jail. Because he ain't finna get no job right away unless it's already one set up. And once he hit the streets after being in jail over five years, you really and truly believe that he's going to be with you and you only love you're sadly mistaken. He finna get out and he finna venture and see the world. He's gonna get that old P-U-S-S-Y 
that he was thinking about before he went to jail. First of all, he gonna do that. First of all. And then he gonna make his rounds. If he don't immediately get a job, it's back to the streets he go. Or if you ain't taking care of him how he want to be taken care of, you heard that dude that talk, that girl. He don't like no homebodies. He want to be outside. But you, you so determined to work it out. But that girl there, she want with that shit. But you know, in the next episode, she probably going to, he probably going to see if this will happen as well. So they leave you motherfucking hanging like he left her hanging. And then, nigga, you hit the street. But you ain't been out in these streets over five years. Things done change. People done changed. So you trying to go back to where you was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. And it ain't like that. It probably ain't even settled like that no more. The block that you was on ten years ago don't exist no more. It's even called another name. But you want to marry this dude that you met in jail through your friend that's going to be there for over 20 years. Baby, the same games they play out on the streets, they play them in the jail too, baby. I was looking at somewhere the girl got down. She going to meet her, her dude in jail. But this dude sitting behind him, visiting with his mother, but he giving her the ass shit to where that bitch done slipped her number to this nigga. Nick. You know what I'm saying? It be a lot going on in the jail. Shit, down here in Atlanta, Georgia, I think they, they had like sick, they had a lot of people. Let's just put it away at the sheriff's department. You know, the full to come jail on Rice Street. You know, full to come jail where I be talking about where they be, uh, got all them bed bugs. And they won't even rebuild. They were talking about rebuilding, but now they talking about renovating. How the fuck you gonna do that? And why you, how you, when you renovate, where them prisons gonna go? But anyway, back to the matter at hand. Them girls that they had to be sheriffs. It was like five or six something. Y'all been taking contrabands to these prisons. One of y'all was having one of them was having sex with one of the prisoners. Yeah. Y'all they been taking phones and everything through that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And someone get jobs just to do that. So there go your stupid ass. Just got high and then Jay got convicted. Jay got fired and convicted. Like, what are we doing? So I'm asking y'all, put it in the comment box below, and I'll be right back with this commercial break. <laughs> I'm so excited about my first children's book. It's called A Blessing for Gorgeous. It's actually about a young girl in middle school who's very popular. Everyone loves gorgeous. Until the next year, a problem occurs. And a blessing saves the day. So, so I asked the y'all, what the hell is going on? And you know, and, and this was what I'm saying. This, 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 this. Let's just get a complete understanding of it, mental, physical, and financial. Now, if you know this person been in jail since they were 17 years old, and they've been in jail for 10 years, you know they're not mentally stable, first of all, because they've been behind bars for 10 years. They've been told what to do and what to eat when the shower shit and shave for 10 years. So that mental needs some mental health. You feel me? Need to be talking to a psychiatrist, psychologist, or whatever counselor or whatever behavior specialist. And a lot of them don't even do that when they're in jail. Because from my understanding is 
you got to pay for that. Even if you ain't paying that but $2 for it, you got to pay for that. But most of the prisoners, they would rather take the $2 and get some cigarettes or something of that matter, rather paying for mental health. But along with that, that's mental right there. Okay, physically. They been in that motherfucker since they was 15, 16, 17 years old. You don't think nobody done hit that, touched that. You don't think they done did oral sex. You don't think they done did it to somebody. You don't think they been smooching. They been in there ever since they was a teenager. It's people was waiting for them to hit the flow with they cover and they pillow. So they can manipulate them as well. So Physically, nine times out of ten, they've been touched. Only the strong survive as a teenager. Financially, now, if they in there for a long time, some kind of way, they make monies. Now, that's if they go to prison. You know, when they go down the road, they get up, they put all of them on that bus and they take them down the road. And, you know, some of them be trustees. They could be trusted. Some of them not. You know, uh, most of them have jobs. They go to school, you know, if they want to. They can go to church. You know, a lot of stuff like that. So when it's time for them to come up for parole, they be done, did everything that need to be done. And, and that be, uh, a good thing they be on their side you know they don't took classes and shit and then some of them be faking it out you feel what i'm saying they act like they really are mental ill when they are not but that's just to get out the jail and go to a mental institution for the rest of their motherfucking life this ain't nothing but a money game and women y'all like to play no stupid ass game now men y'all be doing that too y'all be choosing no women in jail be mean online how the fuck is y'all got an online prisoner app. <laughs> and the government be saying all of this shit. When you be talking to that nigga on the phone, that nigga be telling you to play his, play your P-U-S-S-Y. The government see all that, hear all that smacking. They hear everything that you're saying. Have you actually been watching the Young Thug trial? So, they hear everything that you're talking about, and you're talking about you can't wait till the nigga get home, and this, that, and the other. And then when he get home, things don't go like you have planned. And you be done married, that nigga. And then on one of the, one of the latest, one of the latest on there, uh, she married the dude in jail, and I be got down come Christmas, you know, they dressed in a pajama and shit. And he, he, like, come home, like, a few days before Christmas. She already got two boys, but you got to keep in mind, he married her. So, those are her children as well. So, with all of that being said, he come home, they sleep in the bed. It's the night before Christmas. All through the house. They put the cookies on the table. The milk ain't nothing else stirring, not even the mouse. Till like four o'clock in the morning, the children come and jump in the bed with them. One of them crying, one of them just want to snuggle. And evidently, all of that been going on when he was in jail and before he got out of jail. So, this motherfucker felt crowded. How the fuck you gonna feel crowded with your wife and your children and then feel crowded at that goddamn jail. <laughs> With all them motherfucking prisons who done did any everything. You feel me? So she gave him a call for Christmas. Dummy. Big dummy. You gonna give a man a car, even though you got a car. He ain't even showed you nothing yet to get a car. What? The little kick in the boots overnight before them children came and got in that room. That was enough to buy him a car. No, you already had that plan when he was in jail and you didn't even know what kind of dude he was. But anyway, you get in the car. An hour after you get in the car, he get the fuck on. He in the streets. But guess what? You know he gonna be in the streets. See, let that check this out. 
You put, the bitch put a tracker on the car. Why did you even get that man that car? Now, let's think. When he finds out a tracker is on the car, how you think he going to feel about that? Because that's where trustworthy issues come in at, and lack of communication. Because if you felt some type of way about the car, you shouldn't have never even gave him the car. He ain't really go nowhere. He went back to the neighborhood where he grew up. He went back to the uh, highway or freeway, two-way highway where his friend um, was doing some racing and his friend got killed, you know, he was doing some car racing and didn't have on his headlights and his friend got killed, you know, he even passed where he, um, used to cop his dope from, he used to do, a uh, girl, I think, hair on, you know what I'm saying, so, um, but my thing about it is, if you went back down memory lane, <laughs> Will you actually go down memory lane again? Back down memory lane. I feel the happiness. And I know he feel the pain. <laughs> Where's he? He going back down memory lane. Like, why do... We as women, we do ourselves like that. And you know, if the shoe was on the other foot, now some men, they will do that. They will be dummies as well. Take care of these women in jail. They ain't never even met them before. Ain't never had sex with them before. Ain't never smelt them. The other girl, she never even visited the man before. And guess what he told her ass? Say, uh, do she think if she would have visited him, would he have really liked? her from her appearance so motherfucker you been in jail and you don't even know people ain't even dang like really married and getting into a relationship because of appearances no more that's a that's a if you look nice you know and you're very appealing to the eye you know that's a plus on you but baby you could be the Whatever, because God made everybody to look different, baby. Because if we all was walking around here looking the same, the world would be a wreck and a, more of a mess than it is now. So, I don't call nobody ugly. If they attitude is ugly, then I say, oh, that's, that was real ugly of you. You know what I'm saying? But, no. Because everybody look at everybody different. What your eyes see my eyes might not see that. So, no. But, listen at what the nigga said, though. So, why would... Mm, so, she probably did have low self-esteem if she never went and met that motherfucking uh, uh, Ain't no way in the world I'm finna be talking about having a relationship. And I ain't seen you, touched you, smelt you. I ain't even finna go that route anyway because that ain't nothing but jail talk and jail play. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of y'all women, y'all be, you know, they let y'all have that little free time when y'all married. You know, you might go in a little trailer or something, spend the weekend or 24 hours and y'all end up pregnant. And when the nigga come out, he don't even want the baby. Some of them come out and go a whole nother route. Some of them be talking about two, three, four holes while they in jail. Let me just put that out on the table. And you be thinking you the main girl. He be done told all y'all bitches the same thing. And guess what? The person that's he calling and they calling y'all on the three-way. They ain't doing that but laughing at y'all whole because they know what it is. And, and some of y'all so stupid. Y'all will say, they'll tell y'all, oh, that's my sister, that's my cousin, that's my homegirl. You know, woo, 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 woo. send her the cash up. Y'all send her the cash up. That be his baby mama and shit. He still paying the child support while he's sitting in jail. Man, come out.
And if that's not low self-esteem, I don't know what it is. Because, baby, when I was doing that shit, I was waking up every day. Every, you know, back in the day, it wasn't no cell phones. It was, you pick up the house phone. Every time I turn around, a motherfucking house phone would ring. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. Because back then, you had to pay for them calls. Them calls came on your bill. And and he, he wasn't getting out no money. He wasn't sending his mama or his sister, cousin, brother, friend over there to pay for them phone calls. Baby, and I woke up one day. Hmm. Got me some call ID. You know how they used to have the little small little compact thing like this. You sit next to your phone. You connect it to your phone. And then you could do the messages on there. And it'll pop up. What number? Come up. I wasn't answering that phone, baby. I wasn't doing that shit no more. Motherfucker, I'm going to take one or two phone calls from you. And that's a wrap. The first phone call, you're going to tell me why you're there. The second phone call, you're going to tell me what I need to do to get you out. Do I need to go to your mama house and get the money and then take it over there to Terry? And we go meet up and we go down there to the jail and he bond you out? I like, yeah, but the mother phone calls all that love. I love you and I want to be with you and where my kids at? Woo -de -woo -de -boy, boy, stop. And with that being said, I'll be back. You know, come back.